This video is all about the endocrine system and for those of you who are learning the endocrine system for the first time it's all to do with hormones and the glands that secrete or produce these hormones. So let's begin by knowing what a hormone is. A hormone is a chemical messenger. Most of them are proteins but some are steroid based for example the sex hormones. An important protein based hormone is insulin and insulin must be injected. It cannot be taken through the mouth orally. It has to be injected because the digestive enzymes would break it down. So one of the important things about hormones is that they are secreted directly into the blood. So whatever gland produces them just secretes them directly into the blood. There's no tubes, no ducts. And from there, they're carried to some part of the body where they have some type of effect. So hormones are transported in the blood to particular destinations. And when they reach those destinations, they can only interact with cells that have a complementary receptor. So there are some cells that will have a receptor and the hormone will be able to fit into that receptor, a bit like the jigsaw here. So when you're discussing hormones, it's really good practice to get into the habit of stating what gland or where the hormone is made, where it goes and what effect it has when it gets there. And this will stand you in good stead for when you're revising the reproductive system, the human reproductive system. So we're learning all about the endocrine system, this system of glands that produces hormones, but the hormones are secreted directly into the blood. There's no tubes, no ducts. But if we compare this with the exocrine system, this is where glands do secrete substances into ducts or tubes like enzymes. The key to this chapter is knowing that the endocrine system is made up of many glands and each of these secrete particular hormones, but to know the name of the glands, where they are in the body and to know what the hormones are and what they do. So let's go through each of the important glands. So the pituitary gland is located in the base of the skull. It's known as the master gland because it controls the activity of many other glands. It's a bit like the conductor in the orchestra. Let's take a look at this master gland, the pituitary gland. It's located here in the base of the skull. It's composed of two lobes, the anterior and the posterior lobes, front and back. And both of these secrete particular hormones. And let's learn a little bit about each of those now. So let's go through some of these important hormones associated with the pituitary gland. The first is oxytocin. You're going to meet this in human reproduction. Oxytocin is produced and secreted by the pituitary gland. It travels in the blood to the walls of the uterus, the uterine walls, where it causes uterine contractions and intensifies them. There's another role as well. Oxytocin is produced when a baby suckles on the breast. This stimulates the pituitary gland to release oxytocin and it plays a role in milk letdown. Next, it's antidiuretic hormone ADH. We learned all about this in the chapter on the kidneys. This is made by the hypothalamus, but it's sent to the pituitary gland and from there it's secreted. And it's secreted when the body needs to conserve water. In this case, when the body does need to conserve water, it travels in the blood to the kidneys and it's involved in water reabsorption. The next hormone is thyroid stimulating hormone, really important, and it's produced when thyroxine levels are low. So thyroxine is a hormone that's produced in your thyroid gland, and when its levels get low, thyroid stimulating hormone is produced and secreted by the pituitary gland, and it travels to the thyroid gland where it stimulates it to make more thyroxine. The next one produced by the pituitary gland is follicle stimulating hormone produced in males and females. In males, it travels in the blood to the testes where it stimulates cells to produce sperm. And in females, it travels in the blood to the ovaries where it stimulates the development of eggs each month. Next, it's luteinizing hormone, again produced in males and females. In males, it travels in the blood to the testes where it stimulates cells in the testes to produce testosterone. And in females, it travels in the blood to the ovaries where a surge in luteinizing hormone will cause ovulation or result in ovulation. One of the most important hormones produced by the pituitary gland is growth hormone. And that's what it does. It stimulates growth. It stimulates the production of new bone, new muscle, proteins. It causes growth. The next gland is the hypothalamus. You can see it here in the region just above the pituitary gland. It produces antidiuretic hormone, but that's then sent to the pituitary gland and it secretes it where it travels to the kidneys. Another very tiny gland in your brain is the pineal gland and it makes the hormone melatonin. Melatonin controls your circadian rhythm, your body clock. The thyroid gland is probably one of the most important on your course. It's located in your neck and it produces the hormone thyroxine, which controls metabolism. 
On the back of your thyroid gland are these four tiny little glands called the parathyroids. They produce a hormone called parathormone and it's responsible for regulating calcium levels in your blood. So when your blood calcium levels are low, your parathyroids will produce and secrete parathormone. It travels particularly to the bones where it stimulates cells called osteoclasts to release calcium from the bones and to put it into the blood. The next gland is the thymus gland. It's located in your chest behind your sternum, your breastbone, and it produces the hormone thymosine. Thymosine activates T lymphocytes, which are a special type of white blood cell, and this gland is particularly active in childhood. The next gland is the pancreas. It produces the hormone insulin. Insulin is responsible for lowering blood glucose levels and particular cells in the pancreas produce the insulin. They are known as the islets of Langerhans, named after the doctor who discovered them. So next, it's the adrenal glands. They're located on top of the kidneys, one on top of each kidney. They produce the hormone adrenaline, sometimes referred to as epinephrine, and they're responsible for your fight or flight response. So next, in females, we have the ovaries. The ovaries produce two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and you'll learn about these more in human reproduction. Estrogen is responsible for building up the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, and then after day 14, progesterone is responsible for further maintaining that endometrium, that lining of the uterus. So next is the testes and they produce the hormone testosterone. So an increase in the production of testosterone is what stimulates the onset of puberty in males. And with this comes the secondary sexual characteristics. So testosterone is responsible for all of those characteristics that you associate with the onset of puberty, the growth spurt, the facial hair, the increase in oil production. And we learn much more about that in human reproduction. So that's the end of part one of the endocrine system, another video to follow. Just make sure that you can do all of these things. Can you define what a hormone is? Can you outline the endocrine system? Can you distinguish, tell the difference between endocrine and exocrine glands? So endocrine, no ducts, exocrine does have ducts. And then can you discuss the location of each of those major glands we've just gone through? Talk about the hormones they secrete and what those hormones do. All of the icons used in this video are from the Noun Project. If you want to learn more about the endocrine system, watch Dr. John Campbell's YouTube channel. Really good.